So the idea that the future could be completely different than the past, this is a revolutionary impulse completely missing in the ancient world because it has a it presupposes a different concept of time. Zizek gets this clearly. So there are no, there is no revolutionary politics prior to Christendom because there is no concept of time which could accommodate a politics which anticipates a future which will be wholly other than the past. The ancient model of time, we could say the perennial model of time, and you find it in India, in ancient India, in the Vedas, in, in, in Chuangza, in China, and so on, and in Greek philosophy, is that time is simply, as Plato puts it, the moving picture of eternity. What comes up and appears to be new is really just something very old, maybe the ancient. Uh, and so this return, this return to archetypal structure. And, and this sets up the pattern for the distinction between the sacred and the profane. Here's another point that Zizek gets clearly, that you know, religion, archetypal human religion, hinges on this distinction of sacredness and profanity being two things. You know, there are holy places and holy times and holy people, and there are profane places, profane times, profane people. And we, this distinction is fundamental. And so, you know, non-Christian religion, and maybe all religion is non-Christian, if we follow Barth and Bonhoeffer, uh, has rights in order that, that are necessary for transitioning from the profane to the sacred or, from, by, or elevating the profane to the sacred. So in Hinduism, for example, when a woman comes of age, when she menstruates, there'll be a special rite that'll happen. Or when people are married or for everything that happens, a rite which elevates the profane event to the sacred by, and, and very much you know, symbolically enables a participation of the individual in the eternal, and the eternal, the timeless, the changeless, because time is a circle. Now in Christianity, the distinction between the sacred and the profane is abolished. This is basic to our discussion. I'm amazed that we haven't really touched on this, but when God, when God is no longer identified with a specific time and place, but with everything, the sacred and the profane the distinction is abolished. This is also the first disenchantment of the world. So you can spin this in two different ways. You could say that nothing is sacred anymore. You know, God himself now becomes a baby, defecating, nursing at his mother's breast, dying on a cross. And so, there, so all these ordinary quotidian events are now identified with the infinite, with the divine. And this means either that um, you know, nothing really is sacred anymore or everything is sacred. But in any case, there's no longer a distinction. There's no longer this sharp divide, which is why there's no longer a hierarchy of priesthood, you know, of, you know, of lay person, priesthood, king and divinity. That whole hierarchy, which is very stable and kind of the architectural keystone of ancient cultures is abolished by Christianity. So Christianity this is what we said in the very beginning, far from being threatened by the secular world with its leveling of hierarchies is the very condition for the secular world. It, Christianity levels all hierarchies. Uh, Ajija gets this because of his Marxism, which is, and, and it's, it's, you know, it sounds like a wonderful freeing thing, and it certainly is, but as we said also, it's got a perverse other side, you know, that this is also the... Um, this is the ontological condition of capitalism. This is the root of the ecological crisis, as Lynn White Jr. said way back in 1967, absolutely correctly. You know, it's one culture who has created the technological attitude which has wrecked the earth by creating a kind of hyper-development of humanity. One culture, which was a Christian culture. So, so there's, there, this is why you know, Christianity is an ambiguous legacy. It's an eco disaster and it's a human emancipation at the same time mm -hmm. and i my understanding is that this too is anticipated in the new testament in the figure of the twinning of christ and antichrist it's the the identification of the infinite with the finite doesn't simply bring redemption it also brings a new form of evil into the world and this new form of evil is precisely what we're struggling with right now and that is why i think the christian legacy 
is is um, is so essential to solving social political issues which appear to have nothing to do with Christianity, like the demise of liberalism or you know the ecological collapse, struggling towards an environmental civilization, I mean, that kind of thing. It's the old idea that you know the the medicine can be a poison, 